Hello, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be talking about Chapter 5, Disruption and Continuity, excerpted by Malka Older. Um, and as always, we're going to start off with a passage from the story itself. As she grew into her voice, she began to combine narrative, essay, harangue, photo manipulation, demography, lyric, and musical appropriation, and other forms of art to create narratives that pointed the way to a more collective future, and that contributed fundamentally to the aspirations of this future people of the no longer United States. In effect, civil society will become, in the absence of strong political institutions, just society. Well, without coherent corporations, social media will become just media. While we can describe these transitions from a distance as neutral changes or even positive outcomes of creative destruction, it's important to remember that for people living in that time, such drastic shifts are disorienting and frightening. Which leads us directly into our summary for the story, because it's a little unusual of a uh, story if you're not used to kind of a different style. Um, chapter 5, Disruption and Continuity, excerpted by Malka Older, is not a traditional narrative. Instead, the story is written as a historical account of future movements and changes to society in 2028. This historical account has sections removed and is framed as part of a larger narrative. The story has footnotes for additional readings like an academic nonfiction work would, um, but moving beyond the structure, the text primarily follows the political movements in a fragmented and disintegrating future United States. While the text suggests a wide variety of political and social entities emerging in the future, the main one focused on is the NAC. NACs, written N-A-C-S, -S, uh, stand for Non-Contiguous Activist Collectives. They are activist groups effectively functioning as governmental and social bodies through the internet. The majority function democratically and emphasize participation within the community. A member of a NAC known as Gentle Invisible is at Zengo. She is the closest thing to a main character in this text, but she's treated primarily as an example of a member within the NAC rather than as a hero or outstanding figure. She's a storyteller as well as an activist. Many of these stories take the form of tweets or other multimedia projects. And she's an advocate of digital alternatives, utopian communities formed in virtual reality worlds. We learn some details about her, but the structure of the story purposely hides certain details. It's important to note that Adzengo is also a member of traditionally marginalized communities like many members of NAX. And near the end of the text, it's speculated that marginalized communities and a status of not belonging is what enabled NAC members to create new and better forms of society. Already familiar with not belonging, they were able to emerge in a world where no one belonged and to help form a more inclusive and sustainable world. Which leads us into our notes for this text. This text is best understood by considering the ways in which we are taught, either consciously or subconsciously, what the future will hold and what the future could hold for humanity. Dr. Malka Older helps frame this idea in the description to a course she taught in spring 2020 on predictive fictions. Quote, Our present is surrounded by futures. Weather reports, science fiction novels, films, cartoons, economic forecasts, year-end predictions, five- or fifty-year plans, election polls, conduct sorry, product launches, mock-ups for large development projects, disaster simulations, all of these offer versions of the future, and their purpose is to influence us, affecting both mundane and momentous decisions that then create the future we will inhabit. Some approaches are framed as neutral or scientific, while in fact privileging certain viewpoints and involving considerable guesswork, while others are discounted as emotional or imaginative. Which leads us into our big question for the story. Uh, one of the big questions of this story is our assumptions for the future and the power of storytelling. Can science fiction stories, games, and movies change what we think is possible for the future? If so, what does mainstream science fiction imply about the future? Feel free to compare and contrast this story to a mainstream work of science fiction. Also, make sure to take a closer look at the section on digital alternatives in this story. Um, and as always, cite the text and any other sources to support your answer. With that, thank for what? Sorry, thank you for watching.